This man is about to meet his future mother-in-law for the first time. The only problem is, she's an entitled mother. But the thing that will shock you is what his future fiancé says after this disaster of a dinner. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, on with the revamped show. Okay, so my girlfriend and I were really engaged to be engaged. We'd both agreed we wanted to get married, but I hadn't done the formal proposal yet because we wanted to meet each other's families first. Neither lived nearby. I always thought the old trope about meeting the in-laws being a big fiasco was a myth, both because I was younger and more naive then, and because I'm lucky to have easy parents. My girlfriend met them for a few hours. Once we were alone, just me and them, I told them my intentions and my mum asked, does she have any kids already? And my dad asked, does she have a good solid job? And they both asked, you really love her? And that was that. I had their full support for the marriage. I thought meeting her parents would be the same. Some grilling was to be expected, but as long as I was honest and respectful, it would all be fine. Relevant fact, they had my girlfriend when they were teenagers. By surprise. So, now had a do-over daughter, their words, not mine, who was just six years old. My girlfriend and I had made the trip to their city, and I met them for the first time over dinner at a steakhouse. It was pretty upscale, and we'd scheduled the dinner for 8pm, so I was surprised to see they'd brought the kid along with them. I met everyone at once, and the initial awkwardness settled once we'd sat down. We were making great small talk when the six-year-old said that she was thirsty. No big deal, right? Well, all of a sudden, her entitled mum, Ellen, starts screaming. Watcha! 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 A waiter came rushing over to see what the commotion was, and without even making eye contact with the poor guy, Ellen went, We've been here forever, and no one's even gotten us any water. My daughter's been asking. We'd been sitting for about 15 or 20 minutes without service, but they were visibly behind, and there were no circumstances that would have warranted that shouting. I should have realized, from how unfazed everyone else at the table was, that I should be bracing myself for a long night, but I couldn't imagine what was to come at that point. The waiter rushed over with water and apologized for the delay, explaining a few very large parties had arrived all at once. The guy seemed sincere and quite affable, but I thought the water would just be an anomaly in an otherwise pleasant night. Then Ellen kicked into full gear. We'll need a kid's menu, she informed the waiter. He said they didn't have a kid's menu, but that the chef could simplify most dishes. What do you mean they don't have a kid's menu? Ellen replied in total disbelief, as though he'd said they don't have a fire exit. He explained that they didn't get too many child visitors, and that there were enough plain foods on the menu that no separate menu had been even necessary. Ellen sighed dramatically and waved him away, literally without saying a word. Waved him off from the table. I tried to give him an apologetic glance, but understandably, he didn't look back our way. I was so glad that poor guy left and didn't have to be subjected to her anymore. Meanwhile, she turned her attention on me, and I almost wish he'd come back. At least he was getting paid to be here. She was like, So you're a screenwriter? And I explained, Well, yes and no. I want to be, but it's hard to get a job in that field that you can support yourself on. So I'm working at a non-profit right now. There's a screenwriting component to the job though, so I'm really happy there. Ellen turned to her six-year-old and went, Hear that, hun? You want to be sure to snag a man who works for profit. Learn from this. It's not too late for you. I couldn't tell if she was trying to be funny or not, so I just let it pass. Looking over to my girlfriend to see if she was even considering speaking up on my behalf. Nope. The waiter came back visibly nervous. That hurt because he was so relaxed and personable from the start of the meal. She asked if we'd like to hear the specials before we ordered, and Ellen said sure. Here's how that went. First we have a lightly seared strip- Next! Oh, uh, okay. Then we have a broiled leg of grass fit- Next! Uh, we, uh, we have a pasta primer vera mix with- Next! And on and on, until he'd gone through all seven or ten specials, even though she ultimately ordered off the menu. A plain ribeye, well done. She tried to order her daughter the same, but the kid said that she wanted plain mashed potatoes, so Ellen let her get mashed potatoes alone for dinner. Then she sent the waiter away. The rest of us hadn't even ordered yet, and everyone else just sat there like it was entirely normal. 
I waited for someone to say something, thinking it was more of her older daughter, my girlfriend's place, or her husband's. But when no one did, I couldn't help myself. I, uh, was the one steak and potatoes going to be for all of us, or...? My girlfriend explained in the tone you'd use for a tourist violating a sacred local taboo. My mum always has the way to put the kids' food in first, so it can get started right away. We'll order once the kitchen has hers. I thought she was joking. Since Ellen didn't just order her kids' food, she also ordered her own dinner too. So, I laughed. Something funny? Ellen asked. Then I realized she was serious and I shut up. Thankfully her dad at least recognized what was normal for them might not be as regular to me and tried to lighten the mood with a change of topic. But not even 10 minutes after we ordered, I guess technically 5 minutes after we'd ordered, 10 minutes after she and her daughter had ordered, Ellen started in again. Another table, that had been there long before we were, got a side order of mashed potatoes with their meal. Ellen threw a total conniption. She was sputtering so inaudibly that none of us could figure out what was wrong at first. Finally, she managed to flag down some busboy who barely spoke English and began laying into him like he just sideswiped her on the freeway. He kept trying to explain he wasn't a server and he could go get someone, but she wouldn't stop to breathe long enough for him to find someone who actually could help. All the while, I kept looking at my girlfriend for signs of embarrassment, or at the very least, irritation. But you wouldn't have known if she was even hearing any of this. Our waiter came over, somehow still feigning a smile, despite knowing what he was walking into, and Ellen actually goes, Why did that table get mashed? potatoes and ours hadn't come yet. The waiter kindly but concisely explained, Well ma'am, those people ordered potatoes before your party and placed their order. Ellen looks this man dead in the eye, finally, and says, Well, it doesn't matter when they ordered it. My daughter is the youngest one here. Her food should come first. You could tell the waiter was working hard to restrain himself at this point. He explained it was a first come, first serve policy and age didn't help one way or the other. He offered to go check on the potatoes. Ellen agreed, and more specifically, she said, You better! But I was clocking him, and he went right back to his service station, because we had only just ordered a few minutes ago. Three or five more minutes passed, during which we could have no other discussion at the table, except how awful this restaurant was, how hungry the poor baby was, who hadn't said a word about being hungry this whole time, and was contently playing her loud iPad game. Without headphones, disturbing all the other diners around us, and how America has lost all respect for motherhood because it's just a me, me, me culture now. I chimed in. I'm with you on that last part, and to my utter shock, instead of laughing at my joke, my girlfriend seemed annoyed with me. So after a few minutes, the waiter comes back and says the potatoes will be out very soon. Ellen then goes and does something that, again, I thought was just a myth. She took three singles and a five out of her wallet and then put them on the table in full view of the waiter. She then took one single away and said, Every table I see getting potatoes before us is a bill god. <laughs> I was absolutely mortified. The waiter, to his unending credit, just took a deep breath and said, I don't have control over the order in which the kitchen fires tickets, but what I can tell you is it should be out any minute, and left without saying anything disparaging. I'd been holding my tongue all night as well, in the name of my relationship, but once the tip hit the table, the $8 tip for a $100 plus bill on top of all else, I figured if my girlfriend was half the woman I thought she was, then she wouldn't mind my speaking up at this point. If anything, she'd be supportive, right? So I scooted my chair back a bit and said, Listen, I know what you're doing with the cash on the table, but that kind of thing makes me really uncomfortable, and it's just not called for. Please put the money away, or we can just continue this some other time. My girlfriend's dad spits back, What? How cheap do you have to be to not believe in tipping service workers? Before I could process whether he was serious or yanking my chain, Ellen shocked me with, No, you know what? You're right. This isn't necessary. I should have known better than to be relieved. 
She folds the bills back into her wallet, patiently waited for the next plate of mashed potatoes to be carried out, and when it wasn't delivered to us, it was a very common side dish at this place, a steakhouse. She went right up to the stranger's table and picked it up off their table. She half explained something about her daughter starving to death as she was walking away with the stranger's food, but unsurprisingly, she wasn't convincing enough for them. The old lady she took it from followed her right over to our table and tried to take it back. I was already searching for my coat tag in preparation to go, but a shoving match was beginning to unfold between Ellen and an elderly woman with a tennis ball walker, and far be it from me to sit through all that had happened only to leave just as the night was getting interesting. The elderly woman was like, Give me back my potatoes! Who are you? <laughs> and the poor little girl was like, Mommy, it's okay, don't take someone else's potatoes! But it all fell on deaf ears. Ellen yelled at the old lady. How could you sit there and eat this when my daughter hasn't even been served yet? She's sitting here hungry, just a little girl, and you're over there stuffing your face? Come on, other potatoes will come out any minute. And the old lady, got to love her, was like, Great, if they'll be out any minute, then what's the freaking problem? To which Ellen still found holier-than-thou ground, gasping, Language, please? Finally, the waiter, and this time someone higher up as well, I think the manager, thank goodness came over to separate them, as they had begun to raise their voices and cause a disturbance. Staff had already asked Ellen to turn down her daughter's iPad multiple times without heed, and I'm guessing the waiter informed management about the tip on the table stunt she pulled, because this was the final straw. They told us we were going to have to leave the restaurant. But we don't even have our food yet, Ellen complained at the guy. This was clearly not the manager's first rodeo. You can take the food that's already been served free of charge. Everything else will be cancelled. Please leave immediately. The old lady didn't miss her chance to knock the potatoes right onto the floor, so we couldn't try to take them with us. Nothing else had been served yet, so we had to leave without any food. When my girlfriend and I were finally alone in our cab, she said, Can you believe that? And I said, Not at all. I really can't believe you didn't warn me. And she went, How could I have known about any of that? And confused, I asked, is she not usually like that? Even more confused than me, my girlfriend asked. Who? Your mum. What's my mum got to do with the terrible service at that place? That was the beginning of the end of our relationship. The fact that she didn't see anything wrong with her mum's behaviour and that I'd be marrying into that situation shook me too deep. We both dodged a bullet in more ways than one. In hindsight, we weren't right for each other, regardless of who her family was. Her mom saved us both a lot of time and heartache, helping me realize in one night what would have probably taken us years otherwise. Within a month, we'd moved into separate apartments and gone on a break that ended up lasting forever. I'm not sorry I won't see you again, Ellen. I am sorry any waitstaff ever will, though. Okay, so you can't control who your parents are or what their behavior is, but you can control how you react to it. And if you approve of that kind of behavior, that is definitely a red flag. The cast. Me, Mary, the mother of three great kids and my employer slash friend. Dylan, oldest child. Max, middle child. Sally, youngest child. Kyle, their awful entitled father slash Mary's ex-husband. So Mary hired me as a live-in nanny around three years ago. When Sally was around six months old, Kyle had left her and the children not long after his daughter was born. He had been cheating on Mary for years and didn't give a darn about those kids. He had loads of failed relationships since they split up and is currently married. Unhappily if their social media posts are anything to go by. This guy is a piece of work. He had a habit of showing up every now and then to act like the perfect father, usually when he didn't have a romantic partner, only to drop them when he found a girlfriend, acting as if his children didn't exist. Honestly, I was glad when the kids didn't see him. They were terrified of him, and he treated them like dirt if he was in a bad mood. He could go from talking about going to Disneyland with them, to telling them he hated them in a matter of minutes. Mary and I were quick to defuse the situation whenever this happened, but we weren't always there. There had been a custody battle, and though Mary had full custody, he was granted visitation rights. 
Kyle is just generally a not so nice father. He full on screamed at Max for wetting the bed when he was four years old. The poor thing was terrified that I would do the same after the way his dad reacted. He tried to hide it for a while because of how humiliated he felt. Anyone that has or works with kids knows that you will never make a child feel ashamed of accidents. Kyle even went as far as bringing it up in front of a few of Max's friends. He yelled at Dylan when he was seven because the little one didn't want to go with him. This was after he shouted at a lady in a shop because they didn't sell a video game he was going to buy for his precious boys, meaning he was going to pretend it was for the boys but would never let them actually play it. Kyle even went as far as saying that he wished Dylan had never been born. He was also bad at shouting at Sally, but she was being fussy. You know, like she's supposed to be because she's a darn toddler. Actually a baby at the time he had frequent visits. He once used his spare key, the one he was supposed to give back to Mary, to sneak into the house and take back the PlayStation he bought for the boys. Why should I buy things for brats that don't even want to see me? I believe that was his excuse. He also stole one of the games that the boys had saved up to buy themselves with their own pocket money. It's the least they owe me for all the crap I've bought for them. Anyway, on to the reason that I'm posting here. The kids hadn't seen their dad in over a year. His choice, but one both Mary and I were thankful for. And the kids seemed to be a lot happier without him there, put constant stress on them. That was, until a week ago, we were drawing in the living room and watching Lion King for the millionth time, when someone knocked on the door. Mary was out getting some shopping for her and an elderly relative, whilst I stayed at home with the kiddos. Sally followed me to the door, whilst her brothers were quite happy drawing. I answered the door, and there he was, Kyle. This dude had decided to show up at the house, uninvited, during a pandemic to see three kids that he hadn't tried to contact in over a year. There was no hello or apology for not trying to be there for the kids. No, he demanded that he be let into the house and that he had every right to see them as he was their father. And like most other times, Kyle couldn't help but raise his voice. Sally was absolutely terrified and had settled for standing behind me, clinging to my leg for safety. The boys had also heard and were peeking out from the living room to see what was going on. As much as I wanted to smack this fitch, the kids were here and I'm a professional, so I had to act like it. I calmly told him he wasn't welcome in the house. Mary had told me on several occasions that he was not to see the children without her consent, and that if he wanted to visit the children, then he would have to have Mary's permission. He didn't like this one bit and started snapping at me that I had no right to keep him from seeing his children. I was just following the rules of my employer. He started hurling insults at me. At this point I was panicking a little. Sally would not let go of me so I couldn't put her down on the floor inside the house. I tried to shut the door but Kyle held it open. He yelled at me again that I had no right to do this as I'm just the nanny and he's their father. He's entitled to see those little brats if he wanted to. Yep, definitely a loving father there. I told him that he was scaring his daughter and politely asked him to stop yelling, leave and call Mary if he wanted to arrange a visit, though the kids didn't have to go if they didn't want to. He made a grab for Sally, so I lifted her up into my arms and turned to the side so she was out of reach. I told him that he was not getting near my kids. I had strict instructions from their mother and I was going to follow them. Just to clarify, a lot of people in my area refer to kids they look after as their kids. So I wasn't saying I was their father or anything and Kyle knew this. He started again with the insults, threatening all sorts and was just generally causing a scene, scaring the heck out of the kids. Eventually, I threatened to call the police and this managed to scare him enough that he finally left. Sally was scared out of her mind and clung to me for ages afterwards, crying if I tried to put her down and refusing to let go of my shirt. I decided to let her stay like that for a while as she was scared and just seeking comfort and reassurance. The boys were pretty shaken up too. I managed to distract them with a few games and movies and called Mary. She said she was going to contact the police. She's been talking about getting him to give up his parental rights 
and trying to get a restraining order. She doesn't think he'd ever hurt the kids, but his behavior today definitely worried her. He tries to use the kids as a way to get back at her. He knows how much she worries when he takes the kids, but he also knows there's not much she can do about it. He thinks he's entitled to see the kids and treat them however he sees fit, just because he's their biological dad. The kids are doing better now, but they're still a bit shaken by what happened. Dylan came into my room a couple nights ago, claiming to have a bad dream about Kyle. He was fine after I read a few chapters of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but he shouldn't be having nightmares because of Kyle in the first place. It's not fair on him. It's so sad because a dad's primary role is to be the protector and the provider, and he can't do either of those things. He's literally stealing from his kids gifts that he originally gave, and instead of protecting them from the harsh things of this broken world, he's the one threatening them and becoming part of the problem. It's just heartbreaking to see. It's just so backwards. I'm so glad they've got a good mum and nanny that takes care of them though. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. All right, Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.